Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I want to give you some tips and tricks I wish I knew when I started editing. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramani. I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the romantic, the incredible of city of Paris, France. But I live in Los Angeles, California now. And in this video, I want to review you some tips and tricks I wish I knew when I started using Lightroom and started editing in general. Now, I'm going to give you for free the source files of this episode, which is two files of over 14 million pixels that I shot on the roof of the Galerie Lafayette in Paris for a very nice sunset night. You can get it by clicking here and you just download it and you have it. All right, let me show you these tips and tricks. All right, guys, so here's a few tricks I wish I knew when I started editing in Lightroom. First of all, I do a lot of panorama, and when I started doing panoramas, I used to take them into portrait mode. And I needed like four to five, six, sometimes seven photos to get just one panorama. Now, I shoot in landscape mode. So just one and two photos, and I got a panorama. So that's my first tip. Second tip is when you right-click Photo Merge and go into panorama, I like to use, you have different projections, spherical, cylindron, and perspective. Now, if I use spherical, uh, I like to use a boundary wrap to take out all this white here. But when you do that, you see you get like the horizon is a bit uh, bended, okay? Same thing with the cylindrical. If I have boundary wrap there, it's bended. But if I use perspective, my horizon is going to be mostly straight. And that only works if you are like, I would say 30 millimeter or above when you do these two photos, but it's a really cool trick. So that's my second tip is use the perspective and boundary wrap option. Now let's click on merge. The third trick is really shoot row. And the main importance why you need to shoot row is mostly for the colors. And you will see why in this retouch. So I'm going to do this retouch like I usually start most of my retouch by opening up the shadows. Okay. But on this one, I'm not going to bring the highlights completely because when the sun is present, it gives something that looks very unnatural often. So when you have the sun in the photo, make sure your highlights are not too low. That's another tip I want to give you. Okay. Next, I do my black point holding the option key. And the idea is I want to have like about 3% of my photo black. Any red or black dots are pure black. And I do the opposite here with the white. Anything which is yellow and red is pure white. But I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I go there with my uh, white point. Okay. Next, I usually add a bit of contrast. And, you know, maybe a little bit of clarity. And not even actually when there is clouds, actually go minus clarity. That's another trick is to... Use minus clarity often when you have landscape. It gives a more natural result. Okay. Next, I add a bit of vibrant and a bit of saturation to make the color pop. Just a little bit. Maybe mostly, actually mostly a vibrant. I, I like to use vibrant. Okay. But remember that I said to shoot row for better colors. Well, that's because you can totally change the colors afterwards, you know, in row. So, for example, on this one, I'm going to go to cloudy. I've done a lot of tests and cloudy is good. But you see, I still have like some kind of greenish uh, light in the photo. So I'm going to add magenta, not necessarily for the magenta, but to kill the green because magenta is the opposite of green. So that's another great trick. Magenta to kill the green. Okay, I think the photo is a little too dark, so I'm just going to, instead of lighting it completely like this, I'm going to leave it, maybe I'm just going to boost a little bit the exposure, like 0 0.15, but you can either use a brush or a regular filter. If you light partially your photo, you will get a much better result. That's something it took me a while to figure out. Two ways of doing this. You can easily use a regular filter. And basically what you're looking for is for tones which have the exact same value. You see how that... Opera is completely lit almost the same way. Now, if I put a little circle, I invert it and I feather it completely and I just add a bit of exposure, just a little bit and a bit of clarity. Now I got something more interesting. You see, it's like I'm, I have some light here. Maybe not, I try to not go over 0 0.5. So I'm just going to do a little bit here. Then I'm going to right click. Oops, sorry. I'm going to right click and duplicate and put it maybe here. Right, right click and duplicate and do it here. So that's one way of doing it. Let me and let me show you the before and the after. Another way of doing it, let me erase this, is using the brush. It's kind of more freedom, 
so you just click on the brush and same thing you add a bit of exposure and you add a bit of clarity you know make sure the feathering feather is all the way in flow is around 70 like in the 80s or 70 range and same thing I'm gonna brush here I'm gonna brush there I'm gonna brush here I'm just gonna brush there the only problem is that it's kind of harder to move you can move them around but it's gonna move all the your brush strokes so I find that using circle are usually kind of cooler uh, you know and I'm just trying to break the tones here and the last tip I want to show which is really important is to use the camera calibration to adjust even further you, your, your colors. You see, I don't like so much the sunset as it is, but now if I start adding a little bit, you see, if I, ch I can change the hue of my color, if I start going right, I'm gonna add back some orange into my sunset and I can add some saturation. These are very powerful sliders and they, they do a lot very fast. And maybe I can add a little bit of magenta in my shadows, just so tight like this. I think I'm gonna go even more crazy on my sunset. Okay, and another trick is you can even add colors with the gradual filter. So remember, all I did was break the tone. And the last but not least, I wanna make that sun pop even more. I'm gonna add a, a big circle. I'm gonna invert it. I'm gonna feather it. I'm gonna add some yellow and some magenta. And I'm just gonna place here where the sun is, make it big. Okay, and maybe it's a little too much, so I'm gonna desaturate the whole effect. I just want a little bit of it, but I'm adding, you know, yellow and magenta and I'm, I'm going to lower the clarity. I don't want any clarity. And uh, let's see, you can see here the before and after you see how I make this whole sun really pop. So voila, that's some of the tips I wish I knew when I started editing with Lightroom. Check this out. We went from this photo. Okay. Which is really like, you know, raw file, very neutral to this photo. Isn't that cool? All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's so easy. All you have to do is click on this and also click on the little bell so that each time I do a video, you know what? You are going to get a notification. It's crazy. Don't tell anyone. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Maybe I think it's funny. Anyways, see you in another video. Au revoir, au revoir, zen, arrivederci, bye bye.